Hello and greetings fellow StarCrafters. P PGO Milncraft here with Game 3 between OGS MC, the blue, he's blue this time, blue Protoss player MC and the red Protoss player Mixayot. This is the Game 3 of a best of 5 between the two players. Uh, we, we saw both previous games end with and with just basically the player who built the most gateways. We saw Bixaya in the last game try to do some sort of uh, one gate into Twilight Council and then use a quick Blink Stalker attack to see if he could put MC out. Uh, but MC with just the superior number, he just he didn't even do a four gate. He actually just did a three gate into Twilight Council, into Dark Shrine, and was just had way, way more units than his opponent and was just able to overwhelm him with his opponents, or with his units, and then he was able to use Dark Templars to force his opponent to go robo, getting even less units, and on top of making him, his opponent go robo, he was able to deal a lot of damage to his opponent's attacking units, and just able to pull ahead that game, and then we saw game one, of course, with the four gate versus the three gate. This is, of course, on the latest patch, as I was previously talking about, and I, d I feel like I don't really explain what the latest patch does. The latest patch increases the gateway timing by 20 seconds, and it also decreases the radius of pylons by one. So it used to be seven and a half and now it's six and a half and the main reason that that was done was that before you could place a pylon like on this map you could place a pylon like right here with the very edge touching and you could put four zealots in who zealots don't take up very much space so you just put them right on the edge and then the zealots were able to write a, uh, walk on in to your opponent so if you were both four gating or so if you were four gating and your opponent was like let's say three gating was trying to defend with a century you could just warp units in first of all you, as you saw excited actually do in the last game let's say they force field the front you can actually see the bottom of the ramp with your stalkers so you you can warp zealots into that ramp, and then that zealot can see everything else, and then you warp zealots into the top. So that force fields, and when force fields aren't much of a defense, and they aren't much of a defense as I was talking about, and when force fields are not much of a defense, just a couple seconds late again, we see MC just super refined with his builds. Then, then that means that whoever has the most Ionian units is going to win, and the most amount of units is obviously going to come from the player who has the four gateways and not the three gateways. We do see a little bit of dancing going along, just trying to be a nuisance, trying to slow down mining just as much as possible. Both players just doing just a little bit of it. Uh, MC, it looks like, may or may not be, no, he's just going to go ahead and dance around there. You see, now their player is actually stealing his opponent's gas, and the reason for that is, uh, with a four gate, a typical four gate, you actually don't need two gases. You only need one because, first of all, you aren't you're going to be building mostly stalkers as your attacking units, so you're not going to have sentries, and and on top of that, you also be uh, producing a lot of zealots as well. So actually, you don't need a second gas in order to do an effective four gate. So if you steal your opponent's gas, sure, you force them into a four gate, but they might have already been going that build anyway, and then you just and then you just waste 75 minerals on your part. We do see both players going ahead and grabbing the second gas way, though. That means that there's not going to be any sort of super aggressive four gate, and uh, especially like Koreans have been trying. You do see he stole five minerals from his opponent there, being a little crafty with his uh, probe. So if his opponent ever gets mined out and is five minerals short of building something, you know exactly what the problem, or exactly how uh, how much that paid off. Although it's it's a fun little trick, I love to do it too. We do see that Mixiad uh, is is actually doing a four gate here. MC, it looks like he's going to be trying for the three gate again. He actually doesn't have 150 minerals, uh, so it is possible. And actually, wow, that's the exact same build as he had in uh, in the in game one actually and the exact same setup. So this is actually going to be the exact same situation as that game. It, now he, it looks like with these three forces he's going to go ahead and look out for pylons. He's missing this pylon though. So they're going to start engaging just a little bit. Uh, and actually MC is out of position. He needs to get these forces back. As soon as the warp gate finishes for McSyot, which it's just about to, we'll see all four of these simultaneously transform. Whoop. And then we're going to see four units warp in right here, and McSyot's almost likely, most likely going to go ahead and push out. MC's going to have a hard time holding this. He does have the sentry to hold it right away, so the sentry will help. And he does have another sentry coming, and he's got a robotics, and the robotics is going to help him because it's going to let him get... And actually, he's just McSyot's just warping in units at home. He's actually not. He looks like he's going for a defensive... Four gate. Actually, yeah, you can tell he's getting a defensive four gate as I was talking about in the previous game because he's getting more more probes. But actually, MC is already ahead on probes, so MC is actually doing one step ahead of him. McSide actually probably could have done a lot of damage if he had go ahead and moved out. But and as I was saying though, the uh, robotics can build immortals, and immortals are quite good against stalkers, so uh, that's why the robotics will help with the defense, but though not immediately. 
So actually, yeah, I'm excited. It's not going to go ahead and attack. He's actually getting a Twilight Count, so, and hopefully it's for Blink Stalkers. It looks like it's probably for Blink Stalkers, because he actually doesn't have that many, uh, that much gas saved up, so you need 250 gas to get a, a Dark Shrine. So actually, it's not going to help him. And... Looks like he's just going to go ahead and he's looking for pylons right now, seeing if MC is trying to do any sort of quick push or anything. But MC is just, as we can see, but of course McSide can't, is just sitting back in his base with his units. He's building an immortal for help, uh, help at the defense. And it looks like both players are just going to go ahead and play defensive. Is this one moment, please? And we are back. And... Sorry about that, I just had to restart it. And we do see, in fact, that McSyatt is going ahead and getting a blink. Um, and, in fact, as I was talking about earlier, he's getting blink and, in fact, not getting uh, Dark Templars. He didn't have enough gas for that. Meanwhile, we see that MC is getting an observer. He's going to go send it over to his opponent's base, see what uh, knowledge he can collect, make sure he, you know, just goes and stays, stays one step ahead of his opponent. He wants to make sure he's not being expanded under, or something, stuff like that. And going ahead and getting Robotics Bay. Now, Late game Protoss vs. Protoss really turns into a Colossus vs. Colossus Fest because there isn't really that much of an effective counter to it. Uh, sometimes you can get enough Phoenix that they can be a counter to it, but when your opponent starts out normally like this and you just move into Colossus, and actually, wow, he's going to go ahead and cancel it. He uses the Observer to see how many units his opponent has. He realizes that he's not going to be able to wait for Colossus to come. He has to be able to fight now, and he's getting more Stalkers right away. And actually, we can see the cooldown timing. He does have uh, one more cooldown available. And he sees the opponent moving in. He's going to go ahead and force field on the ramp. Yep. But the Blink Stalker is going to go to the Blink in. Uh, and we do see, in fact, that he is force fielding to prevent his opponent from being able to focus fire and be able to maneuver around these little areas. Probably not the best force fields in the world. He doesn't want to be able... This is force fields actually stop his ults from attacking. He probably should have put him behind his opponents. Unless those were, in fact, were a, a, a mix uh force fields. They might have been, actually. Uh, possibly. We just see another Immortal going to go ahead and come out. He focused on the first Immortal, which is a great job. Oh, and able to blink on out of there. Great move on his part. Now these Zalts aren't going to be able to engage because they don't have any support from the... He's going to deal even more damage. And, oh, but he's going to take some shots from the Immortal from up top. And he's going to go ahead and warp in more units and go ahead for round two. We do see another Immortal on the way from the, uh, on, the, on the part of MC. Uh, the first Immortal, of course, was focused down because they do a whopping 50 damage. There's so much damage to armored units. The Stalkers, of course, are, in fact, are, uh, armored. And we do see that McSai is probably waiting for one more round of Warpins. And we got 3-4 going in, and he's probably going to move up and go ahead and attack again. He's going to send the Zalts first. MC is possibly going to try to force field the ramp. He's not going to force field the ramp. Surprisingly to me, actually. Yeah, I guess he wants to save it for the Guardian Shield. We do see the Guardian Shield going up. And lots of shots. Great job. Two Immortals deal so much damage to Stalkers. And Stalkers just aren't really able to focus down uh, that damage too much. Because Immortals, of course, can take a maximum of 10 damage per shot. Because they're hardened shields from the uh, from the Stalkers. So the Stalkers aren't able to deal their 414 damage. They can only deal 10. And he's going to take a couple of shots of those Zealots. Then back away. He's got his own... Century coming, and then he's got his own robotics facility uh, coming as well. I'm not quite certain what McSide's doing. It looks like he's still trying to break his opponent. I don't think breaking his opponent's very likely, though, as as he's got three immortals now. There's no way he's ever going to be able to break this with a fourth on the way. Absolutely not. In fact, MC will probably be able to push on his opponent pretty soon. And actually, that's probably what the Century is designed to do: is to force his opponent's ramp in case he sends some units out, and then able to take out whatever units were, uh, get trapped at the bottom of the ramp, while the rest of the units are not going to be able to help it. Meanwhile, MC, go ahead and keep the Observer uh, here. I believe he saw that his opponent's Robotics Bay. Yeah, he did, in fact, see his opponent's Robotics Bay. So he probably knows that an Observer's on the way, so he wants to make sure he doesn't lose his Observer right away when he gets spawned uh, by, by being next to his opponent's Observer. Also, he probably wants to keep uh, an eye on his opponent's army to see how big it is. And actually, MC is a much bigger army. Look at that spread. Uh, immortals, of course, have range 5 versus seven or 6 for Stalkers. So he wants to keep the Immortals nearest the ramp where the Stalkers will be trying to run up. And actually, I kind of wonder if he just wants to go ahead and move out here. I mean, I realize his opponent, oh, his opponent has two force fields now. That's probably not the best idea. And actually, McSai could probably just warp it another century if he needed to in order to keep force fielding the ramp. So actually, McSai's doing a great job of keeping his opponent bottled in. I'm not quite sure what he's going to do after his opponent is after his opponent is able to break free from this little contain, though, as... Uh, MC's army is just playing bigger and better and actually able to take out his opponents and he's going to be able to blink out of there so there's no force fielding of the ramp. MC is going to go ahead and blast away at the pylon. Look at how fast those immortals take out the pylon and then he's just going to go ahead and march straight towards his opponent's base. 
Uh, Mixiah, knowing that his opponent isn't an immortal anymore, he's just going to go shoot, shoot at MC's army as it walks by. Able to take out two free stalkers there. Able to close the gap a little bit. And actually, MC isn't that far ahead. And actually, he's behind by one in terms of... In terms of... Uh, in terms of... Arm, uh, supply count. But because of those immortals, his army's actually that much improved. And look at those force fields there. Able to limit the amount of uh, swings that the zealots are able to take. And MC now is blink two, evening up that um, uh, that end of the fight. So his immortals are just pure gravy on top of it. And we actually do see MC winning this race so far, uh, staying, uh, uh, being quite far ahead of his opponent. His opponents, of course, excited trying to focus down the immortal. Meanwhile, MC's great blink biker able to keep the weakened stalkers alive. And now he, the contain is going to be reversed. He's got an observer now to be able to spot the high ground. He wants to pop his opponent's observer. He's able to do that. So his observer is now safe from any sort of uh, combat from his opponent. And now he's going to be able to maintain the contain on McSyad. McSyad maybe, uh, perhaps wants to try to warp in a couple of zealots here. But he's just scared for his life right now. He wants to be able to make sure to stop any sort of push from MC. Because the observer is able to spot the high ground. So the stalkers are going to be able to go ahead and blink on up to the top of the cliff. Uh, because he's able to spot the top of the cliff with his own observer which he's going to want to do soon if he's planning on doing it because his opponent is about to get an observer out and going to zap his own and zap MC's observer which and there it goes goodbye observer MC now observerless uh, it's not going to make that much of a difference at this point because of course no dark templars are coming from either a player as both players recognize that Both players recognize that uh, uh, both players recognize that each other has a uh, has a robotic space, so it wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be a good use of resources to get a dark templar. Get any sort of dark templar. We do see a replacement observer coming on the part of MC. It's kind of funny how like they destroy one observer, then the other part of the person gets a replacement, destroys his opponent's observer, and then it keeps going on back and forth. MC should probably do a little bit better job checking for pylons. He doesn't see the pylon right here. It's not going to make much of a difference in this game, I don't think, because the, it'll only make a difference if there's combat right here or if McSyad tried to sneak in a couple of zealots and just run him into MC's base. That would give away this pylon though, so which is not necessarily what he wants to do. So perhaps that wouldn't be a good idea. And also, of course, it's not a good idea right here because MC's army is just going and sitting out right here. He wants to do it during combat if he's going to try to do it at all. And typically speaking, during combat, you want to try to keep it uh, keep it close. And he's able to take out McSyad's observer there. Not able to get away. MC was able to see the flicker from the observer, send his own observer down to be able to take it out. McSyad, meanwhile, is building up forces as well. If you go to the unit counting tab, which might be more useful at this point in the game, McSyad is actually ahead by one on probes. It looks like I'm... Uh, oh, no, that's McSyad's. In fact, Mixiah's pylon that he's going to go ahead and go down and build. And we do see that Mixiah has a replacement observer coming. Mixiah has five more zealots, but he's nine less stalkers. And because they're blink stalkers, that's actually a really big difference. However, he does have the only sentries. And of course, his opponent has. Wow, look at those blink. <laughs> those chargers. Uh, not quite able to do it. Chargers, not to be confused. Charging zealots, which I just referred to as chargers, not to be confused with the San Diego chargers, which are in fact slightly different. And it looks like a big engagement going on here. The force fields are keeping a couple of zealots out of the play, but not really a whole lot able to focus down that immortal right away, making sure it doesn't deal too much extra damage to the fight. And meanwhile, I'm not even sure who's force fielding right now. It looks like Messiah force fielding. Oh, of course it's Messiah force fielding because he's the one with the sentries, able to keep a certain amount of his opponent's uh, sentries in the back. And MC, just with his greater number of stalkers, able to blink forward and deal even more damage. These zealots can be finished off quickly. MC is going to go ahead and blink forward, finish these guys off, and take his opponent out. It looks like his... Uh, Weapon combination having the greater number of immortals was able to prove, uh, which is able to prove better, and as a greater number of zealots as opposed to sentries, which don't deal that much damage, showed that MC was able to do uh, just go ahead and win this game. Look at that army differences of 50 right now, 50 supply defense, just absolutely incredible. And it was a great game three right here, and we're going to go ahead and move on to game four. The um, game four is going to be on Teldarim Altar. This is PGL Milncraft signing off.